Pepperland goes blue. Back, everybody. It's Jeffrey, uh, Blue Meanie on the forums. Rotorex support here with you. Uh, we're going to do a quick little video. I do apologize for the sound you might hear in the background. Uh, it's a small workspace, 3D printer, printing parts. Sorry. Um, so, you've got the V2 Atom. You love it. Maybe yours are still flying great. Uh, maybe you had some issues with your 4 and one and you just got an upgrade and you're going, how do I do this? Uh, it's pretty simple and rather quick. You're going to have a frame more than likely if you got the full kit. Uh, I don't have the frame. I'm using the V2 frame. You can use the V2 frame. You don't have to use the V3 frame. You're going to get to these beautiful new 2-in-1 ESCs. And you're going to get at least one V3 canopy. So I've done some pre-disassembly here. I've removed the screws from my motors because that takes a long time. And I didn't want to do that on video. And I've removed the screws from my canopy. I've shown this in a few other videos. I'm going to show it again. It's a great little tip on the camera mount here. When you back these screws out to take the canopy off, don't take them all the way out. And you'll see if you just pull them to the point where they come out of the mount so that you can take the canopy off, it will keep the camera and its mount attached. Uh, it's just one less part to worry about losing or getting damaged or dogs chewing on it. All right, so now we've got canopy off, motors are free. We're going to turn this over and we're going to take the bottom screws that mount the mounting plate to the frame out. Like so. And now our cube is free from the frame and set the frame to the side. Next up is Actually, no. Uh, we don't need to remove this at this point. We can just keep this intact. If you want to change your power lead, uh, or if you want to change out the antenna type, you can go ahead and take that off. But for the rest of this video, we don't need to do that. So the next step is we've got to essentially tear apart this stack and put these in. Now, these loom standoffs, they came more than likely not attached if you have a DIY. Uh, they were attached if you had it ready to fly. They just screw off by hand. It's pretty simple. The little plastic ones are going to be a little tight. What I do is I always grab from the outside corner and just twist it just enough to loosen. And then they should just come off with finger. Same thing here. Make sure that when you're doing this that you're staying at the outside edge and moving it just a little bit. Because uh, you don't want to knock any components off with any of those pliers. Alright, next one off. Some of these layers are going to be a little difficult to pull together. It's a nice tight fit. Make sure you're not using any tools. You're not going on there with screwdrivers or anything. Just you kind of use your, your fingernails and work it in. Pull it apart. Set it aside. Now the next layer is pretty similar except instead of plastic and aluminum standoffs we've got these nice little brass coated things. Same thing goes here though guys. Start on the outside very corner and turn it. You don't want to damage these components because you will if you if you get in there and wrench it, you're gonna you're gonna break some of this plastic. You're gonna break something off. So do the same thing. Loosen all these up, and then they will just come off by hand, like so. All right. Now same thing here. Very carefully. Pry this apart. Don't use any tools. And then we're going to set this aside with motors and all. We'll come back to that later. Now, in your kit, you're also going to get some extra standoffs because you're going to have an extra layer, so you're going to need four more of those. Assembly is pretty simple. You're just going to take this, make sure that you get the holes for the pins on the same side as the pins and simply line up all four corners. Make sure you push down nice and evenly where the pins are. You should feel it go down pretty solid, like so. Now we're gonna put the post on, like so. Uh, I just always start with the finger tight. 
And then we're going to do the reverse. We're just going to grab by the outside edge and just tighten this down. Don't make it super tight. You don't want to squish that board. You don't want to break anything. Just make it so that it's tight enough that you can't loosen with just your fingers. Same thing. Be really careful. Nice and tight. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with the second ESC layer. Same thing. Make sure that you get these holes to line up with the pins on the layer below. And just line them up. Make sure the four corners are lined up real good. And just ease that down in, nice and even. All right, so you will notice that there's one motor per side on each layer. This is kind of a preference. If you want, you can pre-solder or pre tin all of these as you're assembling it, or you can wait until it's done. Uh, I would prefer myself to tin this as I'm building it, uh, just because as you can see, it's kind of a small space in there, and it's not gonna be the easiest to get the solder in there. So if you want to at this point, before you stack these and tighten these both down, you can pretend these pads, these are where the motors are gonna be connected. All right, so again, I'm gonna put more posts on, like so. I'm not gonna bother tighten this down for this video, uh, just because I've actually uh, gotta do some other stuff with this quad. So I'm just gonna kinda, you're gonna see these finger tightening, but rest assured, I will tighten these down firmly when I'm done. And then time for the last layer, which is the flight controller again, same thing. Making sure that the holes that go through the next layer line up with the pins. Line up the four holes. Push down nice and slow and evenly where those pins are. Should snap right in. All right, so now the last thing that we need to do, once we've got this all done, everything's pre tanned and ready to solder, You'll notice that when this goes on here, uh, that it's it's swapped because we've added another layer. So all your connections that used to be in the front are going to be in the back for the flight controller layer, not the video. Camera still on the bottom in the front. But you notice this is reversed. So when you go into your configuration, you're going to have to make sure that you remove the yaw rotation. It's currently at 180 because before the flight controller was in this configuration, you want to put it to zero because now you'll notice that the arrow that normally says forward that points to the back on a V2 is pointing forward. That's it guys, just reassemble. Use the uh, new V3 canopy. You'll notice it is just slightly taller, just a couple millimeters. And that is just to accommodate that extra layer. Other than that, it's exactly the same. Uh, I feel like it, maybe it's a little stiffer, possibly a different mix of plastic, uh, or just because it's slightly larger, it just has a stiffer feel. Any questions, let me know. Uh, you can see me on the forums. You can comment down below, or you can open a ticket. Uh, the website is rotorx.freshdesk.com. We're always there to help you guys. Keep flying, have fun, and uh, keep a lookout for more videos. Thanks for watching.